Let's say this. You finally saved up enough money and think to yourself, yeah, I'm going to spend it on my setup. But you don't know what to specifically spend it on. If you are the person in this scenario, um, hey, this video is just for you. I'm going to be going over 7 accessories that you might want to consider when upgrading your workstation or gaming setup. This is the first time I'm making a video in this format, so feedback in the comments is welcome. And if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It helps out the channel way more than you think. But without any further ado, let's continue with the video. The first thing on the list is a desk mat. This is one of the cheapest and in contrast, the most effective way to improve the overall look and feel of your setup. The main reason you would want or need a desk mat is that one, it gives you more space to move your mouse around which is really good for low sensitivity games and two, it gives a sort of symmetrical feel between your mouse and keyboard and looks way better than just a general mouse pad. Having said that, if you are buying a desk mat, there is one thing you need to take into consideration and that is the material used. The one that I have is made of this nylon stitch material which is really soft to the touch and has this rubber material on the bottom which stops it from sliding around when I'm moving my keyboard or mouse around. Now the reason I mentioned this is because this isn't my first desk mat. My first desk mat was actually made of leather and it was kind of bad. There are some advantages to getting a leather desk mat over a nylon stitch one like this, but that's just it being waterproof mainly. And the cons really outweigh the pros, but that's about it. It tracks dust and dirt way too easily. For some reason I felt more friction using the leather desk mat and I really just did not like that. So I got this one made by Lead Sale, Lead Sale, I'm sorry, I don't know how you pronounce that. And for £10, I think it's definitely worth it. The next thing I would recommend is a USB hub. Generally, these are connected via USB Type-C and what it does is once connected, it opens you up to a lot more UI ports such as more USBs, HDMI and Ethernet. Now because I have so many devices, I actually ran out of UI on the back of my motherboard, so I got this one made by Finisk, and it's great. The connecting port on this was pretty small for me, so I had to dish out an extra £5 to get this Type-C extender, but after that it was really useful and it worked perfectly. I'd say the perfect use case for this is that if you own a laptop, and generally now these are becoming a lot more sleeker, and tend to skip out on things such as Ethernet, and some didn't even come with a full size HDMI port. So a USB hub could fix this issue and the one that I own right now cost me £20 which in my opinion is a steal for this and yeah it even has a charging port on it. The keyboard is the main input device of a computer and if your keyboard is bad then it can ruin your setup really easily. The keyboard that I have is made from G-Lab and it's the Keys Rubium. It's pretty good overall, I made a dedicated review on this, so click on the pop ad banner in the top right. But anyways, the stock keycaps that came with this keyboard were fully blacked out, and it allows some of the RGB to bleed out of the sides, which I actually found pretty nice. But because of the type of these keycaps, it became too glossy and smooth on the top for my preference, so I dished out an extra £20 for this new set of keycaps by HyperX. It's called the Puddings Keycaps, and these are made from double shot PPT, so it's a lot more durable than the stock keycaps. In my opinion, I think I prefer these a lot more because the RGB seems way more bold. However, if you are going to buy a new set of keycaps, please check if it's a UK layout or US layout. The reason I'm saying this is because my keyboard is the UK layout, but I'm very clever and I bought the set that is US. So, yeah. <laughs> I still wanted to use these keycaps though, so I just didn't use the shift and enter key because those were too big. A new set of keycaps are a really good way to change up your keyboard a bit and I'd say not to do this if you have a membrane keyboard or if you have a set of keycaps that you really like already. But hopefully soon I'm going to be reviewing a budget hot swappable mechanical keyboard that should be uploaded but yeah subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that video. Okay now this one on the list is a little more subjective, so if you do just general gaming and you don't use your microphone that much in your day to day life or you don't mind the one that you currently have then this one you could probably skip but if you do something like content creation or stream on twitch or anything like that then a microphone is almost a must have. Now there's nothing wrong with using a headset microphone but they are just generally lower quality and it's not the main priority for most of them. So that's why I've picked up this one. It made by Tono. 
it's the TC777. It comes with a mic stand and a pop filter attached to it, which is really good if you're doing things like podcasts or things more audio based. And I find the audio quite high quality as opposed to something like the one on my headset. If you don't have much space on your desk, then it's recommended that you get a pop filter with it. No, sorry, what? That you get an arm stand with it. But for 30 pounds, the price tag isn't unreasonable at all. Okay, I know I just went over keyboard like a few minutes ago, but come on. But recently I've been watching a lot of keyboard YouTubers and getting into the custom keyboard scene a bit more. And a lot of these custom keyboards are usually uh, 10 keyless or 65% or 6%. Basically without a 10 keypad. And coming from a guy that actually uses a 10 keypad quite often, I found out recently that you can actually get these module as a USB instead, which is kind of cool and not a lot of people actually know about this. So I thought I'd just mention it here. Okay, I just want to move away from the PC space a bit and talk about something else really quick. So I have an Oculus Quest 2 that I use a lot, and now I might have an addiction to try and beat harder Beat Saber levels that are slowly spiralling me to insanity. But anyways, over time and with a bit of careless use, the lenses inside became super sensitive and eventually started having more scratches in them which made it really blurry and hindered the user experience quite a lot. A similar thing happened to my Galaxy Active Watch that I also made a review on. So needless to say, it was a pretty big issue. So after scrolling on YouTube and Amazon everywhere, I finally came across this. It's branded as Polywatch and this is a lifesaver. It's very easy to apply. You just put a little blob on the center of the area. Use a microfiber cloth or a soft tissue to wipe it and smear it around. Let it sit for two or three minutes with a bit of pressure. Clean it off and you're done. It's as simple as that and it gets rid of scratches that easily. Although I will say, if there are deeper scratches, you might have to do this a couple of times, but that's it. So for the price of £3, you can go back to using whatever it is, just as it was from the factory. If that isn't a steal, I don't know what is. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you really like this video, then subscribe. We have a lot more videos like this coming in the future. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Right, bye.